My name is Dean Nelson. Thank you, Alveda, for the opportunity to be here today. I serve as the Executive Director for the Network of Politically Active Christians. INPAC serves as an organization to teach, train, and activate social conservatives, particularly in the African American and minority communities, to be more politically involved. This issue regarding health care is an important one for our nation, and it's particularly important for me. Because about five years ago, uh, I could no longer afford the health care plan that my family and I had. But it required me to do a little bit of research, and I found something that now is called health savings accounts. And this particular card is an example of Golden Rule, which is a faith-based health savings account that I found five years ago. And the important thing that I want to emphasize for us today is that five years ago when I first found that plan, over the course of that time period, I now actually have more health care and it's cheaper for me. I want to state that again because most people don't believe that. But now, today, I actually have greater value in my health care by choosing a health savings account and it is cheaper than it was in the beginning, primarily because of competition. There's a lot to be concerned about with this 1,000 plus page health care bill which our elective, elected officials both change daily and refuse to read all the way through. It will seek to cut costs not by common sense measures like tort reform or, and, or allowing health insurance companies to compete across state lines but would rather pay doctors less and slowly depriving the elderly of life, pro life providing care. Yet, perhaps the most tragic of all the provisions have nothing to do with health care uh, at all, but rather designed to persuade the most vulnerable among us, particularly mothers, uh, not to have their children. The CAPS Amendment, which passed 30 to 28 despite bipartisan opposition from Republicans and pro-life Democrats, would mandate federal funding for elective abortions. Subtitle, or excuse me, Title V, Subtitle B would allow Planned Parenthood, the nation's largest abortion provider, to actually be involved with school-based health clinic provisions. Our president, who, can, who as a candidate, publicly pledged his devotion to all of Planned Parenthood's legislative goals in 2007, in my opinion, is trying to fulfill his promises under the radar. He is absolutely determined that the provisions in this bill to fund and encourage abortions among the poor, brown, and uh, vulnerable remain obscure to the general public while the same, at the same time placating the ferocious abortion lobby that worked so hard to elect him. Now let me understand and let you understand that I love our president and I pray for him continually as a minister. But when it comes to the issue of life, particularly in the African American community, we find ourselves almost below replacement level. And I believe that it is important for our president, who publicly has stated uh, during the election that he wanted to see abortions reduced, to actually own up to the policies that undermine what he says he wants to accomplish. I'm not the first to wonder if our president himself would have been born had there been a strong public option available for his mother who bore him out of wedlock while she was still a teenager. I have spoken with many adults who, in my, li in my lifetime, who would not be here had it not been for the mother's inability to procure that $300 needed to abort them. The price of a medical hitman may not be the most ad admirable reason to bear a child, but it has saved many lives and by the grace of God. Raising children will always be more work than killing them, but it is also far more rewarding. Make abortion free and we will see where the administration intends to do its promised cost cutting in the slow, silent extermination of the people it views the least desirable. Thank you. We also have members of the Pregnancy Care Center community because the question is often asked, well, you say don't abort your babies. What are you going to do with all of the babies who come who are unwanted and not desired? So I asked a member of the pregnancy care community to come up and join us. She was not expecting to speak, but I'd like for her to introduce herself and share for about two minutes on that particular term. Do we care beyond abortion? And as Dr. Harrison has said, 
The word abortion may not appear in the health care bill. The word euthanasia may not appear. But death with dignity leads to assisted suicide. Women's reproductive health, the package very often includes abortion. America deserves better, and we want to help that happen. Please. My name is Lori Carter, and I am the director of underserved outreach with CareNet. CareNet is an organization, an affiliation group that represents over 1,100 pregnancy centers across the United States. For those of you who may not know, pregnancy centers are there in your communities to offer compassionate care to women who find themselves facing an unplanned pregnancy. The services they provide are free, and they are there to meet a woman at her point of need. It is a holistic approach to meeting her need. It, it addresses her not just from her physical situation, her physical problem, but also with the emotions, the spiritual, the intellectual, the relational issues that she's also facing. So these pregnancy centers are there just to meet her at that point of need. I found as in my position, as I'm reaching out to African American pastors as well as community leaders, that one of the things is very important for us as a, a, a movement to discuss with our young women is the fact that reproductive rights, it's not necessary for you to have the right to abort for you to have full reproductive rights. Reproductive rights for our generation and the generations to come simply means something that is going to validate the health of the mother. Having an abortion, it's not necessary for you to have an abortion in order to pursue your goals, basically. If a young woman today, we realize that it's not like it was for maybe our grandmothers or great-grandmothers who felt that the only way to have a, have a career, to have education, dreams fulfilled, was to have the option to abort in the event of an unplanned pregnancy. That's, that's old thinking. It's, it's not the way it is today. So young women should take heart and realize that if they put a specific exclusion in this bill that says abortion is excluded, that will in no way deny our reproductive rights. We will still be able to pursue all of our dreams. So I encourage young women to, to make your voices be heard and to clarify that it's not necessary to do that. Thank you.